Hi everyone, welcome to my first video featuring a guest. So just for a bit of background, Travis and I are friends from university. We actually studied together in Barcelona on our data science masters. We also flat shared, did the odd hike together, etc. <laughs> so yeah, Travis, if you want to like, I don't know, briefly introduce yourself, anything to add, where are you from, where do you live right now? Cool. Yeah, it's great to talk to you, Emily. Yeah, we had a great time in Barcelona. The Masters was so fun. <laughs> and Emily was a great roommate. Um, yeah, so I'm actually in California where I grew up right now, um, just like visiting my, my parents for a little bit. Uh, normally, though, I'm in Brooklyn in New York um, and work there as a data scientist. Um, yeah, work at Bowery Farming. Uh, we're a vertical farming company. So we grow vegetables, mostly leafy greens like lettuce, kale, arugula, that kind of thing, in these warehouses that are close by urban areas like New York, where most of our lettuce comes from faraway places, like in, like California actually is one of the biggest growers. So we're a way to do local produce in areas where you can't usually grow. That's, that's really cool. Um, okay, so let's start from the beginning. Like, how did you discover coding? When did you start? Like, what was your journey from the beginning? Yeah, so I studied engineering in undergrad, and there was a small coding component to it, but it wasn't super stressed. Um, and it was something that I kind of sought out on my own, uh, just knowing that software is like a big deal and would likely be a big part of my career. So I did take a couple classes in undergrad, uh, more in like software engineering, but I'd say that my bulk of my experience was from my first job. Uh, I was working at a company called Verisk Analytics, they're in the insurance industry, and I was mostly programming in SQL to start, uh, mostly doing like business reporting for management and like pulling reports and like doing analyses in SQL. But then there was also an opportunity for me to learn Python and do a lot of that analysis in like pandas and do a little bit more than what you can do in just SQL. Um, so for instance, like automating reports that were being manually created in like Microsoft Word and Excel, just like automating workflows for folks, and then also doing more like statistical analyses that you, you couldn't do just in plain SQL. And I was really keen on getting that experience. So it was, I'd like tried to put myself in that position where I was coding more in Python than in SQL, kind of with the goal of breaking into data science, where I knew that Python was like definitely a, a skill that would be required. Thanks. That's, that's really interesting. Um, so why do you like coding? What is most fun about coding to you? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think with coding... I love the ability to take something that was taking a really long time before, like I was talking about the insurance industry and like automating reports. It was like 20 to 25% of this sales team's job was to like create these reports manually. And it felt so satisfying to be able to like automate that for folks and get them back to doing something that they actually care about <laughs> and not just like manually, manually doing something. Um, so I think it's really just like being able to build things that we didn't think were possible before and just like streamlining things um, and help folks focus on, on what they want. Um, as a career too, I, it's really nice to have something where you don't have to be in person to do it, especially like in this day and age post COVID or post main pandemic, I guess we're not post COVID yet. <laughs> and to be able to just work from wherever. I think it's like a superpower and like really allows you to work for a ton of different organizations and, and opens up your horizons a lot. Nice, yeah. Because I feel like a lot of people um, fear that coding or coding jobs or just bunching everything together, like AI um, coding, that's gonna take over uh, like people's jobs. But if anything, it automates things, it makes processes run faster and it frees up time for people to do other things and work on more important things. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So do you have any tips or advice for anyone starting out their coding journey? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I think I was able to learn so much just online through courses and like even by watching this video that's showing that you're like seeking out information to like help you on that journey. And I'm sure you've like already found a lot of other resources too. 
I think, yeah, there's a wealth of information that you can learn online. And like when I was in my first job, that was primarily how I learned was just by Googling things that I was curious about and also like taking courses. Um, specifically, I was like using like Udemy and uh, I'm, I'm even forgetting like which ones I've taken. And of course, that's going to change so much depending on like what language and like what type of thing you want to get into. Um, but yeah, really casting a wide net and uh, like carefully evaluating what courses you're taking, I think is like something that's really high impact, um, and a skill that will always help you. Um, like I'm still learning and like taking courses online and like trying to grow. That's one of the fun things about technology is that it's always changing. There's always things to learn. Um, and that's fun to like figure that out. I think too, besides teaching myself online, a huge, huge help was finding a technical mentor. So once you're in a role where you are uh, coding day to day, or maybe even you aren't, that's not like your technical job, but you're working in an organization where there's folks coding, uh, really befriending those people and like developing a relationship with them and letting them know of your ambitions is a game changer. Like, I think in my my current job at the vertical farming company, there were a couple folks that were much more senior than me, and them looking over my code, like making a like a pull request and having them review it, um, took me from being kind of a like self taught person who you know can get the job done, but maybe it's not the most efficient or the most stylistically great. Um, going from somebody like that to a more senior engineer. And I think they're able to also parse through better, like what types of things you should be focusing on. Cause I think that was something I struggled with in the beginning was, you know, there's a million things you can study online, but like which ones are actually the highest impact and like most valuable use of my time. But by talking through my ambitions with a mentor or like somebody that has more experience, that was so helpful um, to like really like narrow that down and, and figure out what I wanted to do. Mm. I love that you said that actually, because I think a lot of people think that coding is very siloed or like, you know, you're just you behind the screen, but there's actually a lot of collaboration with coding. You're always working with a team, um, mentors, people more senior than you who can look over your code and yeah, give you tips. And you're often, you you often can't build something on your own. Um, It's also more fun to do it in a team. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Thank you so much, Travis, for all your insights. And it was really interesting to hear from you. And thank you so much for sharing your experiences and advice that I'm sure a lot of people would find really, really useful and helpful. Awesome. Yeah, so glad to be on the show. Thanks, Emily.